In problem eight, we're gonna work with the same quadratic function we did in problems two and five. And in this problem, we're gonna find the x-intercepts and we're gonna plot and label them on our graph. Now, if you remember from looking at our function in the previous examples, let's take a look at our graph. So negative three x squared minus two x should be entered into y1. And we're graphing on what's called the standard window. That's negative 10 to 10 for x, negative 10 to 10 for y. Now if we're going to find the x-intercepts, we want to find where the graph crosses the x-axis. That's really, really hard to see in this picture with this window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window a little bit. I'm going to take my x values from negative 2 to 2, and I'm going to take my y values from negative 1 to 1. And let's see what that does to our graph. that makes our graph look a lot different. So when we're looking for our x-intercepts, we're looking for this point right here and this point right here. We want the ordered pairs where the graph crosses the x-axis. So let's follow our process to do that. First, in our y equals, we have our function entered for y1. In y2, we want to enter 0. We're going to find the intersection between negative 3x squared minus 2x and 0. So really what we're doing to find the x-intercepts is we're solving negative 3x squared minus 2x. That's our original function. We're setting that equal to 0 and we're going to solve for x. Right now we're going to use a graphical process. In our next lesson we're going to be using other processes, algebraic, to solve this. So we've got our two equations entered into y1 and y2. We can hit graph to make sure that the intersection appears in the window. It's hard to see because here's the equation for y equals zero. So this is y2, y1 is the equation here. So we're going to use our second calc 5 intersect process that we've used before. Now notice your screen may look different. Mine has a cursor on the right hand side. So if I hit enter, to find the intersection three times, it's going to give me the first intersection of 0, 0. So our right side intersection, our x-intercept, is 0, comma 0. So let's go ahead and put that on our graph. So I know what the graph looks like from my window here in the calculator, but I'm just going to indicate the first intercept and I've changed my scale so my x-axis goes from negative 2 to 2, my y-axis goes from negative 1 to 1, there should be a negative 1 down here, so that'll come into play when I actually draw the parabola in just a few minutes. So now we need to find the left side, this one, the left side x-intercept. We're going to use our same process, second calc, number 5. But now, when it asks me for the first curve, if I continue, I'm going to find the same intersect. So I'm going to go over using my arrows. I'm moving my cursor closer to my second intersection. Notice the cursor is here now. I have to do that during this process. I'm going to hit enter three times, and that's going to give me my left side intersection which is the left side x-intercept. So now if I put all these pieces together, I have my right side x-intercept, my left side x-intercept. I'm going to go ahead and plot the vertex from problem 5 and draw my parabola. Granted, I'm not the best artist. Yours might look better, and it doesn't really look like this. Um, that's the picture in the graph here from the calculator. is actually a little nicer. But you should have all these elements listed. So x-intercept 1 on the right side, notice it's the same as the y-intercept, that will not always happen. Left side intercept, negative 0.670.